So, but another pottery firing. It's a good time of year to fire pots. Uh, right here we're drying out all this wood that we gathered. Um, the conditions are a little bit damper than usual. But, uh, so we got some different types of pottery here. This is all southwestern style pots. Uh, these two are Jeff's pot, uh, pots here. And we got uh, one of my water oyas. And then right here, this is actually uh, uh, Bell Beaker culture pottery from, um, from uh, late Neolithic, early Bronze Age in uh, Europe. So this is really common style for the prehistoric European pottery. Um, so yeah, right now we're just warming up the fire and getting everything heated up. And we got our kiln furniture right here. Um, kiln furniture is basically just rocks that you use at the base of the kiln to lay your pots on. Um, preferably volcanic stones because they, they, they superheat and they don't tend to explode. Uh, so yeah, this is where we're at. We're just heating it up. And having fun. Yes, absolutely. <sighs> so this is the next stage. Uh, the primary fire was lit. We have our uh, kiln furniture, our, our uh, volcanic stones, and some uh, old pottery sherds um, that I fired previously and put those in there. And so now all the pots are just going to be sitting in, in this bed of coals and just sort of just superheating. Um, and you want to make sure that your pots are up to the proper temperature. Um, Basically what that looks like is if you can put a drop of water on your pottery and it sizzles off, then you then then at, at that point you're ready to um, add wood for the actual firing, which is all the wood that we have around here. Um, and the reason why that is because clay is hydroscopic. It actually absorbs moisture from the environment. Um, and so you want to make sure that any residual moisture that's inside your clay is uh, pretty is mostly out. So you don't have any uh, blow-ups or, or cracks or anything like that happening. So these are just going to sit in here for a little while and just going to go from there. So this is the last part of the process. This is where we put all the wood on. This is where there's there's really no turning back. Uh, it's reaching peak temperatures now. It's uh, and it, and it's going to continue to climb. Um, and once this fire dies down, once there's no more flame, immediately you want to douse the fire. You want to put you want to basically bury your pottery um, before the uh, the pots have a chance to oxidize in the environment in the uh, kiln environment. Uh, so we're just going to keep an eye on this and let everything uh, burn and, and uh, do its thing. It's very hot right now. Um, so yeah, just going to wait and see and uh, during the final stages we're going to bury it and uh, get a good cream gray colored pottery. You ready? Yeah. Alright. Oh, firing's done and we uh, just buried the kiln. Well, not just, really, it's probably about a few hours passed by. We're just gonna unbury the pots that we have here. And so this is considered a reduction firing. The meaning, uh, the definition of a reduction firing is basically reducing the oxygen in the, uh, in the kiln environment before the pots actually have a chance to oxidize. Um, and so most most of the clay bodies around here are uh, iron rich clays and so when they oxidize they turn a bright orange color kind of like that jar um, but uh, but when you reduce it like this and you bury the kiln just at the last at the last second before before the oxidation occurs what you get is a cream gray color um, so that's advantageous if you have painted or decorated ware with organic paints because um, it'll be a cream gray pot with a black carbon stain which is what your paint was but it's more decorative this is kind of a Puebloan style technique of pottery uh, firing so you want to slowly dig into this into this pocket here so you don't hit your pots and you start seeing some coal come out of there slowly but surely got a little shirt from the cover shirts. 